Hello everybody, it's Steph here from CoinUp Community and uh, today I am joined by Mike Clokey from eService and we wanted to catch up with him and find out how business has been since lockdown and what eService is doing to support operators now that we've got a date for reopening. So what's business been like? I can imagine it's been pretty tough for you, Mike. Yeah, morning Stephanie. Uh... Um, yeah, it's been uh, it's been a, certainly a, you know a tough uh, tough 10, 10, 13 months. What are we up to? Thirteen weeks now. So you know it's been a tough time. Yeah, um, we've never closed the office fully. We we did have to furlough a lot of staff, but uh, we always maintain skeleton staff to try and keep product going out to the to the different sectors of the industries that we we support. So yeah, a small number of uh, small number of staff kept six people in the office. So that you know that rendered 38 people placed onto furlough uh, during that time and i must admit you know the 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 real godsend has been the uh, uh, the furlough system put in place by the by the government i think without that um i like many other businesses would have uh, would have really would have really suffered so it's it's been you know a real uh, a real godsend to us and, uh, and what about uh, your customers to keep, uh, your customers, Mike. Um, what's what's been the sort of timeline for them? I mean, you must have been getting some pretty anguished calls early on. Yes, yeah, certainly. Uh, you know, we we had the calls early on, and we we aim to work with all of our customers on you know what we what we can do to assist. You know, pushing out credit terms, etc., cetera, etc., cetera, that sort of thing. Uh, we uh, we continue to ship whatever orders that anybody could receive and and was was willing to accept. And uh, you know, really, you know, really, we just looked at it and, and decided to work as best with our clients as we could. It was very, very quiet. The first oh. four to six weeks was extremely, uh, extremely quiet in the industry. What we did notice, you know, through our online sales and a lot of home users of pool equipment, or I guess they've got the, right. their their, uh, their uh, fruit machine from uh, you know from eBay in the in the front room, they decided to revamp it and uh, and play those so we got quite a lot of calls from home users and our uh, our online sales increased quite uh, quite dramatically for for the first six to eight weeks of uh, of lockdown um you know we moved a lot more in that way um you know my staff were available um on you know on remote uh, on remote calls to take those orders process it and then a small small number of warehouse staff to get the to get the product out so you know we just worked with anybody in whatever way we could it was uh, you know just listening then, to people and, and then understanding of course we had the situation a bit of a false alarm didn't we we thought that agcs would be able to open so i imagine that spurred quite a bit of activity as you as you work towards that and then all of a Absolutely. sudden Again, we Absolutely, have you know that you know that was a huge false start for the for the industry and uh, and and very disappointing and um, and also quite I don't think there was uh, a lot of understanding as to why 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 the false start why the um, why the U turn it was it just you look at the measurements that I, I, I hear over years you know that the industry has been asked to do various studies of uh, you know um, the way in which people play and player protection all this sort of thing and and one of the things that i heard was it was all to do with dwell time well you know i think that opening uh, um, lbo's i think it shows a real um, non understanding of you know the dwell times because dwell times in LBOs are longer than AGC. Yeah. I think the idea in the government's mind was that people wander into an LBO, place a bet, and walk back out again. Yeah. Well, you know we all know that's not the case. They go in, they place a bet, they watch the TV, they play on the machines, they yes. they, they 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 loiter. You know, yeah. whereas AGC, we know that dwell time is actually shorter than LBO. So yeah. um, you know, I just don't think the information has been put in the right the right hands to make sensible decisions. Really. It's, it's very frustrating. It's very difficult, I think, to educate the government. People move from positions, they come and go, and there isn't an understanding. I think the fact that they put arcades down, they didn't even specify AGCs in the first place, Absolutely. shows complete yeah. lack of understanding. But for you, supplying um, at this stage PPE products, you must have suddenly... Uh, had a bit of a shock then on the Thursday evening to find out that uh, your customers were not going to be opening on the Monday. Absolutely. So we, we took the decision early 
early on not to just be a me too on the PPE equipment. Um, we didn't do uh, the likes of, um, you know, masks and, uh, you know, uh, gloves and, the, you know, the little bottles of hand sanitizer, things like that. We decided that we were going to focus on several main products. That was machine dividers. So to give uh, uh, social distancing measures between, between machines and, and player protection there. Hand sanitizers and the, and, and realistically, the, the large bulk amounts of, uh, of you know, five litre bottles of, yeah. of hand sanitizer. So those were the main products and we, we set ourselves up and we brought those products in. Um, on, the, uh, on the Thursday, when, you know, on Wednesday or Thursday, when we were hearing that it was all you know, full steam ahead, um, yeah, we had uh, we had a num you know numerous pallets of equipment sitting by the by the warehouse doors, ready to be collected with transport booked, and a flurry of uh, phone calls saying, "Hold, you know, we're not going to be open. There's not going to be anybody to receive the equipment." So yeah, we had a uh, had a bit of a backlog at the at the warehouse, but um, you know, again, we worked with people. We scheduled we rescheduled the deliveries, and we've got stuff rolling out now to uh, to, to to clients That's ready great. for. Uh, um, and we've got a date now for both FECs and AGCs. Um, are you going to widen the range at all to take into consideration FEC um, uh, customers? The, the products that we, the, the key products that we're supplying will be suitable for AGC and FEC. Um, that we do a, a, a range of machine dividers that uh, that, that um, are easy to fit and. Um, very versatile for uh, for both uh, venues. The hand sanitizer um, range that we do that again, it's a, it's a stainless steel device. Uh, it's really uh, really attractive, easy to maintain, and easy to keep clean itself. And it's got visual uh, representation on there to say it's it's full of hand sanitizer. It's dispensing. It's it's run out, etc. All that sort of thing. So it's easy to use in in a, in a number of. Uh, um, venues. I'm disappointed that casinos haven't got the nod. Um, I do yeah, a lot of work in the casino it, sector. Really, well. I found that that's quite surprising. Yeah, yeah, that's uh, very surprising for me on, in, in in that area. Um, also, other things that we're uh, we're working with uh, with operators on are more contactless payments. Obviously, that's big for the FEC um, um, sector. Um, contactless payments to work with change machines, so they can dispense their Two piece for pushers, but you know, it depends how we can how we can actually run the uh, uh, you know the pushers, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. But um, you can um, you know attach contactless payment devices to um, all your video equipment, everything that's uh, you know n uh, non category um, B, C, or D. Um, so you know we're we're working with uh, with clients to fit that equipment so that they can simply and easily take a card payment onto the onto video certainly it's very popular um i think that what's the you know, delivery the range, situation sorry to sorry. interrupt you what's the delivery situation mike you've always had very regular deliveries of your your products and services so yeah I, you know, everything at the moment is we, we're trying to hold uh, the right amount of stock and it's difficult because you know we, we try not to overcommit because you know the, the financial uh, situation has been has been difficult for us like any other company over the last uh, uh, the, the last couple of months. So we're trying to hold stock of what we you know of what we can and what we what we know that clients are, are needing. So we're we're you know increasing the stock levels of certain products. Certainly the you know the the, uh, the screen dividers and, uh, mm -hmm. and sanitizers, etc. We're increasing that sort of stock. What we did through uh, through lockdown with the the number of um, uh, engineers that I had uh, who remained in the workshop, we we just processed everything we could to get it back onto the shelves, ready for advanced replacements, things like that that are going to go out. One thing that we are aware of as well is that not everybody has completed their twenty pound note update. We were in the you know we were at the, in the, the the mid throes of twenty pound note yeah. updates, yeah. and we all went into lockdown. So. You know, and people were looking at that, ready to get be prepared for you know Easter and and and, and mm -hmm. so on. Um, you know, ready to to roll out the the, the upgraded twenty pound note kit. But um, a lot of people have put that on hold as well. So we're expecting you know a resurgence of of that. So we're prepared. Mm -hmm. We put things on the shelf, ready to uh, ready to be dispatched. Yeah. So so really, if you've got um, operators who are watching this. 
the advice would be to get in touch as soon as possible to give you as much warning. Um, yeah, in certainly. Let, let us know how we can help you. Let us know what you're looking for. Let us, let us understand what sort of delivery schedules you're looking at. Um, you know, I'm, I'm talking with a lot of, um, uh, of operators who have multiple venues who are saying, okay, they're looking at their, their venues on a, a tier one, tier two, tier three sort of basis and saying, okay, they're going to they're gonna test the water um, on day one, opening their, what they class as their tier one venues. They're then going to you know, see how that, that progresses maybe over three to four weeks, then look at some of their other venues and, and how they feel that they will, they will perform. Some, some companies are already telling me that they, they think that some of their venues will, they won't consider opening them again until next year. Uh, which is uh, you know very very concerning um and um you know we'll just work with people as they want the drops and the and the shipments we'll we'll tailor that to their to their needs and we'll we'll aim to get our um one of the casualties uh, was our as our uh, was our van service that we we used to do a personalized delivery service um obviously we had to stop that yeah. um, at the beginning of of lockdown that'll be back again we'll have our uh, we'll have our drivers into into uh, you know different uh, areas of the country, delivering and collecting um, equipment, etc. So you know we'll, you'll see the uh, you'll see the the regular delivery drivers from e-service. They'll be back in, in front of That's people as soon as we as soon as we can. That's great. Now, uh, and you personally, uh, have you been back on the golf course, Mike? Uh, I thought Absolutely. you were there first, first when they reopened them. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yes. Um, it's, it was, um, it was, it was great to, uh, having, uh, I don't think, I, I can't remember going, I think it was nine weeks. I went nine weeks without picking up a golf club. I can't remember ever doing that uh, in my life before. So, um, yeah, um, it was great to get back on the golf course. Um, so been out a few times now, um, strange that you can't stop and have a beer at the end of, uh, at the end of the golf, uh, at the end of a golf game. I was thinking to myself, I'm not quite sure whether, uh, I think that's the main draw now for golf for me. I think, I think it's having the beer at the end of the, <laughs> at the, end of the game. We have, um, we have been able to uh, um, put something on at the golf club. We can't use the bar facilities or the, or the terrace, etc. But uh, there is a little lawn and we, uh, we, are, we are able to get some bottles of beer and uh, have a socially, that is, that is socially distant beer at the end of, a, at the, end of the game. <laughs> And it's nice to be uh, it's nice to be back to be able to play a, a four ball now as well. Um, you know, to get out and play uh, play with three of your, three of your pals is is quite yeah, good. So, brilliant, yeah, it's good. brilliant. Well, I'm looking forward to the next industry event where we'll all be able to get together and uh, and have a drink. And uh, we missed our uh, Park Avenue this year, and uh, yeah. it's Absolutely. it's been a tough year. So lovely to see your see your face there. And thank you very much for talking to me today. And thank you, uh, Steph. hopefully I see mean, you soon. <laughs> I look forward to it. Okay. All, all the best with uh, what's left of lockdown. All right. Take thank care. Thank you, Mike. All the best.